The Terex AC-100-4L is a 100 ton capacity crane and the L in the machine's name is there because it has a longer boom than typical cranes of this size with a maximum boom of up to 60 metres long. In this review we'll look at two versions of the model, 2107 is in Terex colours and model 210701 is in the colours of the Austrian company Felbermeyer. Both models come in the same style of packaging with the Felbermeyer version just having a sticker on the box. There's no information about the real machine on the box sleeve and inside there's a couple of expanded polystyrene trays and these protect the model well. The crane itself is a heavy part because it's made mainly of metal and the other parts in the box include the fly jib which can be added to the end of the boom and there's a bag containing quite a few small parts that you need to assemble the various parts of the model. But unfortunately there are no instructions with the model which is not helpful to a new collector. The only other parts to get out are the main counterweight pieces and there are two smaller pieces which are cheek weights for the counterweight and they are a little bit more reluctant to come out the box. For this part of the assembly we'll put the crane in road going configuration and the first thing to do is to separate the mirrors that go on the cab doors. And after cutting with a sharp knife, you can just press those into the preformed holes that are in the cab. The next parts to add are three hangers which clip onto the side of the boom, and these are used to support the fly jib. The hangers have to be put in in the right order, and they're a pretty easy fit onto the boom. And once they're slotted in place, you can then hang the fly jib on the hangers. And it sits on the supports reasonably well, but not quite perfectly, because it's actually quite difficult to get the supports to line up properly with the fly jib. The model can be posed like this, or you could even add some of the counterweight if you wanted to. But for the purposes of display, we'll also add on the hook. So the first thing we need to do then is to take the thread off of the winch drum and then run it over the end of the boom, thread it through the hook, and then tie the rope back up onto the boom head. There's no particular tying on point, but once you've made the knot, you just need to trim off the end for neatness. Unfortunately, the hook doesn't directly fit to the hitch point under the cab, so here a short length of chain has been used. In terms of detail there's been no attempt to model the suspension or transmission underneath the model. But the wheels are good with nice chunky tyres. And it's good that the non-driven third axle has a slightly different wheel design to the others. The new style cab has been modelled well with its unusual beacon lights on the roof. And the arrangement of headlights has also been modelled well. In Terex colours there are very few graphics on the model but things like the door handles are detailed well. And looking at the rear there are access ladders and the various lights are painted on. Looking on top of the carrier deck behind the cab there is plenty of diamond pattern surfacing. The crane cab has got plastic grab rails but there are no mirrors or wipers on the outside but the interior is reasonably good. The rest of the crane body is moderately detailed and there is a nice metal handrail on the top. However, one particularly good aspect of the crane is the counterweight slabs, which are nicely detailed and decorated. The boom sections are fairly simple with some detailing, and the pulleys in the boom head are plastic. However, the hook is a nice metal part, and it has a single metal pulley inside. The lattice part of the fly jib is metal and well made, and the upper part is plastic, but with a good colour match. The Felbermeyer version of the model is almost identical to the Terex version, but of course the colour scheme is much more interesting. There are many more graphics and they are applied very well so they look sharp and overall it produces a very attractive model. There is one small difference on the Felbermeyer version of the model though and that is that the pulleys in the boom head and elsewhere are metal rather than the plastic ones used on the Terex version. Now it's features time so the first thing to do is to try out how the model rolls along and it works perfectly well in a straight line. The steering is very good on this model. The front and rear axles are linked pairs and they've got a very good range of movement so you can set them quite tightly steered and then the model will trace out uh, a very sharp turn. Although you can't replicate all the steering modes of the real crane you can replicate crab steering where the crane moves in a strange sideways direction. To set the crane up you put all the outriggers out and they're on two stage plastic beams which are strong enough to support the model and the pads at the end are just on simple screw threads which works okay but it does mean they don't look like realistic pistons. The crane counterweight is very good though, it's made up of a number of separate pieces so you can configure it in different ways if you like and they all fit together well. 
Once you've assembled the main part, you can then also add on the two cheek weights, which just slot in at either end of the counterweight. And when they're added, that forms the complete complement of counterweight for the crane. Because the model's been accurately made, one option you've got is to put the counterweight onto the midpoint of the carrier deck, which is where it would be if the crane was erecting its own counterweight, and that allows some different display possibilities. As the model engineering is good, when you rotate the crane body, it just correctly goes over the top of the counterweight, just like the real machine. And then you can fix the counterweight to the crane by using two plastic clips, which just screw into the top of the counterweight. When fitted, it's as if the crane has jacked up its own counterweight, and then you can rotate it with the counterweight attached. Raising the boom of the crane is a bit of a trial of strength, because the cylinder is very, very stiff. But of course, that does mean you can pose it at reasonable angles without it slipping down. To extend the boom you just pull out the sections in the normal way like a telescope and there's a locking pin system which locks the section when it reaches its maximum extension. And to close the boom up you just push that locking clip back in. The fly jib gives a range of different rigging possibilities. You can just hang the hook from the end of the lattice section. Or if you want maximum reach you can open up the folding section and then just pin that into place with a couple of the plastic pins that Conrad supplies. And it's good that they are a tight fit because then they hold the folding extension true and solid in a straight line. Moving to the end of the fly jib, there's a latch system which allows you to pose it at various angles to the boom head. And there's also a guide pulley for the winch rope. If you want the fly jib just to be fitted straight onto the boom head, then you just line the ends up with the holes that are in the axles that hold the boom head pulleys. And then you use a long plastic pin to drive right through and make the complete connection. This can be a bit fiddly, but it's certainly strong once it's in place. Alternatively, you can pose the fly jib at an angle, so you have to fit it slightly different and just use a short pin on the lower connection. And then you fold over the latch pieces, which enable you to make a pin connection into the ears of the boom head. Two alternative angles are possible using this method, and although it's a little bit fiddly to fix in the first place, once it's done, it's uh, quite stable. With the boom fully extended and the fly jib attached, a big model results about 1.6 meters in height. If you want to play crane driver, you can operate the winch using your thumb, although you wouldn't want to do that for too long. And the other working feature on the model is the tilting operator's cab, which allows the operator to work more comfortably at height. Overall, these are solid, well-made models from Conrad with features that work well. It's fair to say that the detailing is not of the very highest level, but they do look good, particularly the version in Felbermeyer livery. They are easy to recommend.